Cosmic Crochet Creations and for today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to crochet this cute little Valentine's Day V keychain. Um, yeah, I do think that the hot pink is maybe a little bit too too dark. You can't really see the, the pink and the red that much or the difference between the two colours I should say. Um, but yeah, you guys can make this V into any shades of pink or red that you like. Um, so yeah, um, I really think he came out quite cute. Um, but yeah, so for, the, for today's tutorial, I'll teach you how to crochet this cute little Valentine's Day B keychain. Um, so yeah, let's get started with the materials, shall we? Okay guys, so for today's tutorial on how to crochet the mini Valentine's Day B keychain, these are materials that we'll be using. So as for the yarn, I'll be using this charity double knit pull skein yarn it is 100% acrylic it is 233 meters or 256 yards it is a 100 gram ball it recommends a four millimeter crochet hook and i'll be using this color tiger cerise for the pink and then for the red um it's the same brand and same weights and everything this color is called metador so it's um so that's red and then you'll also be needing some white for the feathers, um, sorry for the feathers, for the wings, you'll need white for the wings and then with that I'll be using a 2mm crochet hook just to get my stitches nice and small and tight so I'll be using a 2mm crochet hook with that I'll be using a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a stitch marker as well as some safety eyes, these are 0.8mm safety eyes with their plastic backs. Um, a keychain, if you do want to make this into a keychain, it's optional. And you'll need a jump ring for that too, so you'll need a jump ring. I'll be using um, a pair of jewelry pliers to help with the keychain, with putting the keychain on. Um, you'll be needing some stuffing. As well as a blunt pair of scissors to push the stuffing into the V. Cap. And also you'll be needing, um, for extra security, I'll be using a hot glue gun. So I will um, put a dab of glue behind the safety eyes after attaching the, the plastic washers to them. Um, just for extra security. Cap. So that is it for the material. Okay. So to get started, you just want to grab your pink yarn. So you just want to grab your pink yarn and then we're going to make a magic ring. So again, I'm using my 2mm crochet hook. So you're just going to want to form a magic ring. So what you'd want to do is take your tail end of the yarn, wrap it around your two fingers. So you're going to hold it there with your thumb over your two fingers. Take your, your tail end, wrap it over your two fingers once twice and then the third time we are going to cross over to form an x then you're going to insert your hook under the first two loops pick up the second loop then you're going to yarn over and you're going to do a chain one to secure so you're going to yarn over and pull that loop through that loop on your hook sorry pull that yarn through the loop on your hook then you can pull your magic ring off of your fingers and this is what it should look like and then what we're going to do is we're going to place we are going to place six single crochets into the magic ring. So in order to do that, we're going to insert a hook into the center of that magic ring. You're going to yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull your hook through those two loops to do a single crochet stitch. Again, you're going to insert into that magic ring. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops to finish off your single crochet. So it's two, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn, o yarn over and pull through those two loops. That's three. Again, insert, yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through. That's four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So now we have two more to do. So insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah. So in order to count your stitches, you'll just look at those V's 
So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And to close up this magic ring, you're going to take your tail end, and you're going to pull on your tail end, and you'll see one loop is getting pulled in. That loop that is getting pulled in, you're going to take that loop and pull it down towards you, and then you'll have an extra long loop in your tail end. To get rid of this extra long loop, you're going to take your tail end and pull on that loop. Sorry, pull on that tail end and your loop should disappear. Okay, moving on to the next round. So, as I said, we'll have six single crochets into that magic ring. Okay, moving on to the second round, we're going to do an increase into each stitch around. And an increase is essentially just two single crochets into the same stitch. So you're going to find your first stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through two to do your single crochet. And then insert your stitch marker. Insert your stitch marker, and then again, you're going to place a single crochet into that same stitch. Okay, so you're going to do two single crochets into the same stitch. And you will repeat that around, placing two single crochets into each stitch around. And your stitch count should have gone up from 6 up to 12 by the end of this second round. Okay, so again, by the end of the fur of the second round, you should have 12 single crochet stitches. Moving on to the third round, we're going to place one single crochet into the first stitch. So that's one, and then you can place your stitch marker back. Then we're going to do an increase into the next stitch. So find your next stitch and do two single crochets in there for your increase. And then you will just repeat that pattern around. So you'll place one single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase, one single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase. And you will repeat that around and your stitch count should have gone up from 12 up to 18 by the end of that round. Okay, so now after completing round three, you should have a total of 18 stitches. So stitch count should have gone up from 12 to 18 by the end of this round. Okay, moving on to the fourth round, we will remove our stitch marker. And then we'll place one single crochet into the first two stitches. And then you're going to place your stitch marker back into that first stitch. So that's one, two, and then an increase into the next stitch. And again, you're going to place one single crochet into the next two stitches, one and two, and then an increase. And that is the repeat pattern for this round. And your stitch count should have gone up from 18 up to 24 by the end of this round. And a great way to know if you have increased correctly is that all of your increases should line up with each other. All of your increases should be on top of each other. And also, if you start with one single crochet at the beginning, you should end with an increase and vice versa. So if you start with an increase on your first stitch, you should end with one single crochet. Okay, so now I'm completed with round four. And this is what it should be looking like now. And your stitch count should have gone up from 18 up to 24. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, that your increases should line up with each other. So if we look here at our increases, you can see them there all lined up. 
cap you can see that they are all lined up all right moving on to the fifth round we can remove our stitch marker and then we can place one single crochet into each stitch around no increasing and no decreasing just one single crochet in each stitch around and your stitch count should remain the same as 24 stitches So by the end of round five, that would, this is what it should be looking like now. So now what we can do is we can end off our pink. So we can slip stitch into the next stitch. So to slip stitch, you're going to insert your hook into that next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook. Then pull that first loop through that second loop to do a slip stitch. And then we can join our red. So you want to grab your red. So you want to grab your red and then we're going to yarn over with the red. So we've got a loop on our hook and pink. You're going to take your red yarn and pull the red through that chain one. Okay. And then we're just going to, for the next two rounds, so for rounds six to round seven, you're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. And so you get back round to the beginning and you will just slip stitch to the beginning. Um, you will not need the stitch marker for these rounds where we are adding the straps as we will just slip stitch to join to get the straps somewhat matched. If we had to keep working in a spiral, <laughs> um, the straps will not look like straps at all. Yeah, so you can just continue placing one single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds in red and your stitch count should remain the same as 24 stitches. So now I'm back at the beginning of the first round of the red and this last stitch here, it looks like a, it looks like a stitch, but believe me, it's just a slip stitch. So we're going to skip that stitch and slip stitch to the, that first stitch of the red. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook, pull the first loop through that second loop. And then you just want to take your pink yarn and just pull on your pink yarn. Yeah. And then again you can chain one and then continue placing one single crochet into each stitch around in the red. And again, um, you will skip that slip stitch there, which looks like a stitch, but you'll slip, you'll skip that slip stitch and then slip stitch into the first stitch of the red. So insert, yarn over, pull through, pull that loop through that second loop on your hook. And now we're going to end off the red. So you can drop your red, pick up your pink, and then we're going to yarn over with the pink. 
and pull the pink through the red. And then again, you're just going to place one single crochet into each mm -hmm. stitch around for the next two rounds. So for round eight to round nine, you'll just place one single crochet into each stitch around, slip stitching at the mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah. Okay, so now I've made a background to the beginning after completing round nine. And again, I'm just going to slip stitch to join. And then I'm going to drop the pink and pick up the red. Okay, we're going to chain one with the red. Yeah, then before we get too far, we can just stop and put in our safety hours. So this is what our little bee should be looking like so far. So we can grab our safety hours. So I'm going to put the, the slip stitches at the bottom um, of the bee. And then I'm just going to insert my safety hours between rounds three and four. So we're going to count one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to put the safety eye in that increased stitch over there. Okay, and then we're going to count over eight stitches. So that's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in the opposite, um, in the opposite increase, we're going to place the next safety eye over there. And then we can put the backs on. So now the safety eyes are on and this is what our little bee should be looking like with the safety eyes. Isn't he just cute? <laughs> okay, so before I continue, I just need to put a dab of hot glue onto, onto the eyes. So now once we're ready, we can continue crocheting, crocheting the rest of the B. So, okay, so we have just color changed to red. And then again, for another two rounds, we are just going to place one single crochet into each stitch around for the next two rounds. So for rounds 10 to 11. And again, we're just going to slip stitch to the beginning stitch and then continue with our one single crochet in each stitch around for round 11 of the red. Okay. <clears throat> and now after completing... Um, Round 11, we are now ready to join with a slip stitch and color change back to pink. So we'll insert yarn over pull through and then pull that first loop through that second loop. Drop your red and pick up your pink. And then chain one with the pink. 
and then and then for round 12 we are just going to place one single crochet in each stitch around and you should have kept the same stitch count as 24 and then I'll meet back up with you when we are ready to do the next round okay so now I have just finished round 12 and this is what it should be looking like now. So we are going to start decreasing now to start closing off the B. So you can actually end off your red. So you can grab your scissors and cut your red yarn. Okay, and then you can just push these tail ends into the B. Don't have to worry about sewing them in. Okay, just leave them in the B. And then again, yeah, okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to start working in the round again. So we'll need our stitch marker. So we're just going to go straight into a single crochet into that first stitch and then place your stitch marker. Okay, so now we're going to start decreasing. So we're going to place one single crochet in the next two stitches. So we've already done one and then two and then we're going to do a decrease. So to do a, a decrease, we'll do an invisible decrease. So we're going to find the next two stitches and we're going to find the front loop. So this is the front loop here, the loop of the V that is closest to you. So the front loop is the front loop of the V. Okay, so the front loop is the loop closest to you. Okay, so these two front loops, we're going into there. So you're going to insert your hook under that front loop of that next single crochet crochet stitch. Then you're going to twist your hook down and pick up the front loop of that next stitch. Okay. So now you have two loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. And then you'll have two loops on your hook and then you yarn over and pull through those two to finish off your single crochet. Then again, you're going to place one single crochet in the next two stitches. So that's one and two. Then we're going to do another invisible decrease. And again, find your first two front loops of the next stitch. So insert your hook under the front loop of that stitch. Twist your hook down and then insert your hook into the front loop of that next stitch. Then yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet. Again, one single crochet in the next two stitches, one and two, and then another invisible decrease. So insert your hook underneath that front loop, twist your hook down, and insert your hook into that next front loop. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two to finish off your decrease. And you will just repeat that around, placing one single crochet in the next two stitches, and then a decrease, and your stitch count should have gone down from from 24 back down to 18 okay. so now we are working backwards if that makes any sense so we went from 6 12 18 up to 24 and now we're going back down from 24 to 18 12 12 and 6 <laughs> if that's correct okay Yeah, and then you'll be left with two stitches to do your last decrease. Yeah. And then you can remove your stitch marker. And then we'll place one single crochet into the first stitch. And then we'll do a decrease into that next stitch. Okay, again going underneath those two front loops do your single crochet and then one single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease one single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease and you will repeat that around and your stitch count should have gone down from 18 down to 12. Okay, 
Yeah. So now this is what our bee should be looking like now. And we are ready to start stuffing our bee. Yeah, so this is what he looks like. You need to keep. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to start stuffing our bee. So we can grab our stuffing. So we can grab our stuffing and our blunt pair of scissors and we can start stuffing the bee. So just place your stuffing on top of that hole and then start pushing your stuffing down with, with the scissors, with your blunt pair of scissors. So after you finish stuffing your bee, this is what he should look like. Um, so yeah, I actually noticed that I put my, my safety eyes um, in the fourth round instead of the third round. Um, so yeah, they should have been one row in. So yeah, they look a little bit funny the way they are, but, but it's okay. It's my cute little Valentine's Day bee, so it's okay. Um, okay, so now after stuffing your bee, we are going to do... Um, our last decrease round so now we are going to decrease in each stitch around so we're just going to go into the front loops of the next two stitches yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and then insert your stitch marker and then again decrease the next two stitches we'll decrease um the, decrease in the next stitch Going through those two front loops. This last round is always tricky. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, And by the end of this round, your stitch count should have gone back down from 12 to 6. Okay, so we're just doing a decrease in each stitch around. Yeah, so now that's what it should be looking like now, our last round. Okay, so we can remove our stitch marker and we can slip stitch to the first stitch. So you're going to insert, you're going to pull through and then pull that loop through, that last loop there. And then you just want to leave a little bit of a tail because we need to weave in this tail end. So then pull up and out and then grab your, your tapestry needle. And we're going to start weaving in our tail end. So thread up your darning needle. And then we're just going to go through the front loop of each stitch around. So through that front loop and that next stitch. And then the front loop of that next stitch. And repeat all around. Okay. Yeah. And then we are going to pull this tight. So pull tight. And then we are going to sew our tail end back inside. So take your tail and insert your needle through the center of through the center of those stitches and out through a stitch on the B. Pull that tight. Okay, pull that tight. And then insert your needle through the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else on the B. Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else on the B. Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else on the B. You will just repeat this a handful of times until your tail end is sewn in. You can do this about three times is enough, but I like to just extra secure it by weaving it in like about five times. Yeah. And then you can grab your scissors and snip off 
that tail end. Okay, so there we go. That is our little bee done. And now the only thing left to do now is just make the wings. Okay, so we can put our bee aside and start working on the wings. Okay, so now to get started with the wings, you're just going to grab your white yarn and we're going to make a magic ring. So again, you're going to take your, your yarn, you're going to take your working yarn and wrap it over your finger. You're going to hold your, your tail end down with your thumb and then you're going to take your, your working yarn and wrap it around your two fingers once twice and then the third time we are going to cross over to form an x okay then we're going to take our crochet hook insert under the first two loops pick up the second loop then again we're going to chain one to secure our magic ring so we're going to yarn over and pull through that loop then you can take your magic ring off of your fingers okay <clears throat> so now to do the heart of the wings we're going to place two single crochets into the magic ring so a single crochet again is insert, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. So that's one and two. Then we're going to do two half double crochet stitches. So in order to do a, a half double crochet stitch, we're going to yarn over, insert into the magic ring. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops to do a half double crochet. Then again, you're going to yarn over, insert into that magic ring, yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops to do a half double crochet. So we have two single crochets and then two half double crochets. Now we're going to do, do two double crochet stitches. So we're going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. We'll have three loops on the hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops like that you'll have two more loops on your hook then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two again those last two sorry then again you're going to yarn over insert into the magic ring yarn over pull through you'll have three loops on the hook then you're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops then again you're going to yarn over and pull through the last two loops yeah that is your two double crochets then we're going to do one treble crochet so to do a treble we're going to yarn over twice okay so we're going to yarn over twice we will essentially have three loops on our hook because of that that previous loop on our hook okay so we'll yarn over twice then insert into that magic ring yarn over pull through then we yarn over and pull through the first two loops then we yarn over and pull through the next two loops and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops okay then again we're going to do one double crochet so again a double crochet is yarn over insert yarn over pull through you'll have three loops on the hook then yarn over pull through the first two then yarn over and pull through the last two then we're going to do another single crochet stitch so we're going to insert yarn over pull through we'll have two loops on the hook then yarn over and pull through two again to do a single crochet then again we are going to do one double crochet so now we're going to do what we did on this side in reverse so we're going to do a double crochet stitch first so we're going to yarn over insert yarn over pull through we'll have two loops on the hook then yarn over pull through the first two then yarn over pull through the last two oopsie i went into the yarn there instead of going into the magic ring okay so again we are going to yarn over insert into that magic ring yarn over pull through we'll have three loops on the hook then yarn over pull through the first two loops and then yarn over pull through the last two loops then we're going to do a treble crochet and again to do a treble we're going to yarn over twice insert into that magic ring yarn over pull through we'll have four loops on the hook then yarn over pull through the first two then yarn over pull through the second two and then yarn over and pull through the last two okay then again we're going to do two double crochets so we're going to yarn over insert yarn over pull through we'll have three loops on the hook then yarn over pull through the first two and then yarn over and pull through the last two again yarn over insert yarn over pull through we'll have three loops on the hook 
then yarn over, pull through the first two, and then yarn over, pull through the last two. Then we're going to do two half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over, insert into the magic ring, yarn over, pull through. We'll have three loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So that's one, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. We'll have three loops on a hook, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, we'll pull through those three loops. And then again, we're going to do two single crochets. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook. Then yarn over, pull through two. Do that again. Yeah. And then to close up this magic ring, we're going to pull on our tail end. And one of the loops should get pulled in, which is this one over here. We're going to grab that and then pull that down towards you. Now you're going to pull it down towards you until that hole is closed. Okay, and then to get rid of this loop, you're going to take your tail end and pull on your tail end. Okay, and then to end off this heart, you're just going to find your first stitch that you did. Yeah, so you're going to find that first stitch and then slip stitch to that first stitch. Okay, then we can end off, but leave a little bit of a tail to weave our wings, or to sew our wings to the bee, so leave a little bit of a tail. And then just pull up and out. Okay, and then we can weave in this other tail end. So grab your tapestry needle and weave in your your tail end and then you just want to weave in your stitches sorry weave in your tail end in and out through some of these stitches So now I'm just going to end off, so I'm just going to snip my yarn there. Okay, so there we go. There is our first heart wing. So now you can go off and repeat those steps to make your second one. And then I'll come back and show you how to sew the wings onto the cute little bee. Okay. Okay, so now I have finished up my two um, heart wings. And now it's time to sew it on. So grab one of your wings and thread up your darning needle or your tapestry needle and then we are going to find the center of the bee so in between those two eyes um, we are just going to okay wait before we do that I'm just going to um, thread my needle through that same stitch that I slip stitched into okay so we need to find the center of the bee, so like in between those two eyes. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to thread our needle into the body and then up into the next stitch of the wing. And then down into the, the body. And then I'm going to come out just like one row next to that, if that makes any sense. And then I'm just going to um, so underneath um, a few of these stitches here just so that I can secure the wing to the body and then I'm just going to sew down into the next stitch there if that makes any sense and then come out somewhere else okay And then I'm just going to come back up here and then I'm just going to thread my needle into that same stitch that I came out of before. So like over there. And then I'm just going to thread my needle back into that wing and then into the bee again. Just so that I can like secure that wing nicely if that makes any sense. Yeah, so I think I'm happy with the way that that wing is sewn on there. 
I think that looks cute. Yeah, so I'm just going to weave in my tail end like we've done before. So just insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and then out somewhere else. Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else. Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else. And repeat this around a few times until you're happy. Yeah. And you can snip your tail end. Yeah. And then we can do the same for the other wing. So you want to grab your, your wing, thread up your darning needle. And then again, just weave in your needle through the same stitch that you slip stitched into. Okay. okay and then I am just going to again just place the wing like right there by the by the other one and again just insert my needle into that same stitch and out the next stitch and then insert your needle up into that next stitch on the wing and then insert your needle back down into that next stitch and then into the same stitch that you previously went into if that makes any sense Then again, I'm just going to come up into one stitch over. So like there. Then come up into the next stitch of the wing. And then into the previous stitch. Okay, and then just sew down into the B. Okay. And then I'm going to tuck down this wing again. So just come out. Um, so just come out one row over from where you originally sewn the wing to and then just go under some of these stitches here okay so just go under those stitches and then insert your needle back down into that next stitch and pull tight okay so there we go that is our little valentine's day be done isn't he just cute now the last thing that we need to do now is just weave in our tail end so again just insert your needle into the same stitch it came out of and then out somewhere else on the bee Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of, and then out somewhere else on the B. Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of, and out somewhere else on the B. Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of, and out somewhere else on the B. Okay, and you'll just repeat this a few times until you're happy with it. And then you can snip off your tail end. Okay. There we go. There is our 
our little bee. Yeah, so there is our little bee with um, the little heart wings and the little Valentine's Day themed body. Um, so yeah, isn't he cute? I think the eyes should have been smaller and they definitely should have been in one more row. Um, I think I should have used 0.5 millimeter safety eyes instead of 0.8. Um, but yeah, now the last thing that we need to do is just add the keychain. So we can grab our jump ring and our keychain and our jewelry pliers. And then you just want to grab the jump ring with the jewelry pliers. And then you just want to, um, so I think I'm actually going to do it this way. So you just want to insert the jump ring. We'll try and insert the jump ring into those stitches of the wing and then into that next stitch on the wing as well, if that makes any sense, like that. There we go, like that. And then you're going to take your keychain and insert your keychain onto that jump ring. Okay. And there we go, there is our little valentine's day b keychain um yeah so there is our little valentine's day b keychain isn't he just cute okay so there he is guys there is our cute little valentine's day b with its heart wings isn't that just super cute <laughs> isn't he just he came out so cute don't you think little valentine's day themed little b keychain I think it came out so cute but yeah i do think that the eyes should have maybe been a bit smaller or at least moved in one row like i initially said um but yeah i think it came out really cute though <clears throat> otherwise i really do think it came out quite cute um so yeah i think it's quite cute don't you think okay guys so that is it on how to crochet this cute little valentine's day b keychain isn't it just super cute isn't it just super adorable let's look at that and his cute little heart wing i think it's just super cute isn't it so yeah that is my valentine's day b keychain i really hope you guys managed to follow along and i really hope that you guys enjoy learning how to crochet this cute little valentine's day b keychain of course, you can use whatever shades of pink or red you would like. Um, I do actually think, looking at it now, that maybe um, the pink that I used is too dark. Um, but yeah, I still think it came out quite cute. Um, so yeah, and definitely the eyes are too big and not in the right place. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I think it still came out quite cute. Thank you um so yeah that is it for today's tutorial thank you guys for watching and yeah i really hope that you enjoyed and managed to crochet this cute little bee um so yeah please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share my channel it really does help me out and um yeah i'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and do all of those free things um that i mentioned and um, yeah, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers, guys. How cool is that? I, I am so stoked, honestly. I, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. It is crazy. I do not think I would, I would get to this point, honestly. It is, even though it's like not a lot of subscribers, it is, it is still a lot of people. <laughs> it's still a lot of people. Imagine like 2,000 people sitting, watching me crochet. That is just... It just baffles my mind sometimes, but yeah, I'm nearly at 2,000, guys. Come on. Subscribe if you aren't already. If you have been watching my, my videos and aren't subscribed, you know who you are. So please subscribe to my channel. Um, you wouldn't want to miss a thing. I have so many tutorials and things that I have planned and so many tutorials that I would like to do, all keychain based, obviously, since that is my niche. That is what I love to do. Um... So yeah, again, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe and share. 
and yeah that is it guys thank you guys for watching and happy crocheting bye guys bye